Okay, how's it going guys? Trader AD here. This is May 1st, 2020 vlog um, as requested from the chat room and today was um, an interesting day. Um, everything I do on the chat room is going to be pretty focused on counter trend. So one of the rules that I always um, try to f try to abide by is to not trade until after 45 minutes. So when Wall Street opens at 930 I'm waiting for 4.15, I mean 10.15 to come around. And right now I'm looking at MIST, um, it showed up on my trade idea scanner and it looks like it halted. And you can see why, because it moved up about 42% in uh, 45 minutes and it has the perfect ramp, progressive move up, and it has a lot of volume increasing. So it halted, it halted for under five minutes actually, and then this is what happens. So I entered with 2,000 shares right out the gates, pretty much, and I'm hoping that it doesn't break past the 430. Now the issue with the um, with with trading this one was the fact that if you look at the daily, um, there really isn't a trend line I can draw. There's a huge gap, daily gap between $12 and uh, $3 something. So um, that's the entirety of the lifespan of this stock. So I'm just waiting for a good move down and I took it. Okay, now my second trade is X, which is United States Steel. And this one was showing a lot of volume um, in that area. It doesn't quite have the shape that I want, but if you notice, it hit a solid number, uh, which happens to be $8.50. And I waited for a one minute trigger just because it was $8.50 and it moved pretty nicely here with 500 shares um, at where I, where I entered, it was just a seven cent um, stop. So a quick move down, it, this one was roughly a scalp, but it was to me almost a sure thing. You can see all those one minute candles that it, that it collected before it hit that $8.50 cent area. Now, if you look at the daily, you can see how it actually touches this area, which is kind of a good little pivot area. It touches this candle and it barely, pa it doesn't quite pass up this candle at $8.58. All right, so this one's Tesla. Tesla dived down because Elon Musk said his stock was too expensive on Twitter. So we really don't know what happened or why he said what he said. So it dived down and it went down to 720, a little underneath 720. And I took it um, for 10 shares and I took it for 20 shares and I kept it really tight because this thing, I don't want any slippage. Unfortunately, it took me out the first time. And then in which case I realized that the shape is still good. And so I got back in.
and I still came out green but you know um, if I had to stop at the very bottom things may have been different but I don't know if I would have because you know there's a lot of slippage there the spreads are pretty big With car, I, it it did a fake out on me. This one actually went to a nice area on the daily, and and yet is still like dived down. So luckily, I only had 400 shares at that time, and it started, um, it just started going against me. In which case, I just let it go, and I start looking at it, another stock that looked really interesting, and it was Liberty Global. This one just spiked up. So I have car running um, with a stop, and if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. Just abide by your own rules, and um, there's nothing. There's no regrets. If it's red, it's red. Now with Liberty, um, this is more like a a news play because it spiked like that. So it doesn't have the ramp that I want. It just spiked up. So I'm going to take it when I can uh, for a short and there was a little bit of a slippage there I got in at 1984 which is a little bit past a one minute trigger but luckily because something that moves that fast too high is always going to come down so I was able to get what I can and just get out while car is still in play I see, I see CCL which is Carnival Cruise this one has always been in the sector it's always been in trouble because of um, COVID-19 and how, you know, those cruises are are pretty dangerous at, th at the moment. So I am kind of worried about how these um, develop because even though it looks like it wants to go down, it may just do a fake out. But you do see the ramp and you do see the nosedive. So I got faked out at CCL. You see that huge spike in volume to push it down? That is a lot of volume to push down past 19. So because of that, it kind of keeps me in the game because I know that if it took that much effort to break down 19, it's going to, it really does have to come back up. But you just have to be patient. And we see that huge spike in the green candle in which I have to enter. I just have to because that signifies that it wants to come back up but now it needs to contend to that 14 area so this one did a dirty move because unfortunately i wasn't looking at the daily correctly if i looked at the daily correctly i would have seen that it really wanted to go further down to another number So because I realized after looking at the daily chart, I, I had to enter. And it actually, because of that daily chart and the move down, and it still looks good, it adds to my conviction. So I add to my, to my position. And it came out okay. So I was looking back at car and it didn't look good anymore. So I'm just going to let that one go. No revenge trading. So I'm looking at Liberty Global and this thing is just moving straight up and you do see a, a spike in volume and then it diminishes as it still goes up. So this is really strange. So 
So I did try it once when you see it the spike down right there, but I'm still watching it. And I see a certain area on the daily right here right at 2040 area so I'm just going to wait patiently to for that 2040 area and uh, and I couldn't wait long enough so I took it and of course I got stopped out again but it's okay because I know 2040 is just around the corner and there it is 2040 and I enter with more conviction. So my patience wasn't quite there, um, but my entries were pretty close to each other because there was compounding trend lines in that area. I just took the first ones and even though I could have taken the second ones. So uh, look, hindsight, I could have probably be a little bit more patient and, and then accrue more profit but it's okay um, it still turned out okay So this last one, FLDM, this one was a bit of a scary one. Um, it just spiked up and I had to take it. And I kind of took it on the one minute trigger and um, I added to my position because it looked like it was struggling to get any higher. And this one did scare me a bit because it got really close to the top and it broke it it hit, actually hit uh, one of my stops because my stop was just a little too close unfortunately So instead of putting it at the very high, I put it at 403. So this time around, it looks like it's rejecting that high area, and so I'm not going to make the same mistake. Once I see it move down again, after it reaches a certain point, You can see it on the daily right here as it reaches up here in the 440 area. So I waited for the 440 and it touched it. And that's when I, I put in a nice amount of shares. But you can see the slippage because, um, because it's moving so fast that I, my entry was at 416. But it's okay because the conviction of knowing that it hit a very strong area on the daily that it was going to come down and so this was like a 900 something uh, dollar day 980 dollar day um, it's not bad but you can tell that um I, I was flustered in a few areas and but counter trend always seems to work that way um, even if you if you trade a little bit poorly, like I said, uh, compounded movements always seem to um, have areas of resistance, um, especially when they're next to each other, or you can see the next trend line. You can always get to that point and counter, and you can always make a profit off of it. As but this case, you can tell that there was two or three that actually didn't go my way because um, I didn't execute it properly. But even still. 
even still with the counter turn strategy you're still able to to get out back on top and it's not considered a revenge trade because it's still a good there's still a trend line on the daily chart so um i hope this was useful and i hope you uh I hope this is uh, helpful in, in some ways for you guys to understand how the counter trend strategy works. Of course, this one had a lot of um, different scenarios, a lot of non parabolic moves, a lot of them were news plays, and yet I can still utilize the counter trend strategy and, and finding how, how, to, how to execute the trade by trend lines. So this will be a, somewhat of a supplemental to the previous lesson two. So I hope um, you guys like this. Please subscribe and like if you found this helpful and I'll see you all next time. Bye.